Hello all and welcome to Well Crochet yet again for another tutorial. My name is Mary and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to make this gorgeous large a granny square. I mean this has the same measurements or same size, I shouldn't say measurements, the same rows, the amount of rows as this little one but look at the size of it, it's huge. And now the reason we are doing this granny square is because this particular join as you go is our current crochet along for wow crochet so if you're a newcomer to the channel and you would like to do this crochet along the links to these these um, steps will be in the description box down below now I was going to just do the crochet along and everything was fine and one of my subscribers said I I'm struggling with this crochet along I'm struggling to get them to join together so what I did was I thought I'd go out and buy myself a nice thick yarn and that way when I'm doing the crochet along and joining together, you will see exactly where I'm putting the hook. Because I think with the smaller pieces, um, it's hard to see that particular stitch. So that's going to be a lot easier for our newcomers. So if you are a newbie to crochet and you would like to attempt that blanket over there that I just showed you, go ahead, attempt it and come to this particular tutorial um, well, maybe not this one, the one directly after it. This is just showing you how to do the granny square because we're just going to show you quickly how to do um, one of these granny squares. And the tutorial directly after this one will be how to join the four pieces together. All right, so I'm not going to talk anymore. I'm going to show you what we need. You will need yarn. You will need some nice thick yarn if you're going to use yarn, a thick yarn. If you are going to use our normal um squares then go ahead and use those as well but if you're going to use a thick yarn this is the one I used um, no I'm not promoting them this is just the one I picked up and I saw usually I use a pure wool 100% pure wool but I noticed this little thing called anti-pilling now for those of you who work with yarn and wool and threads and all sorts of things you will know what pilling is <laughs> now pilling is those little things it's little fluffy things little dots little all sorts of weird stuff happen to your yarn when you use it but this is an anti-pilling yarn so i thought let's try it out what can happen okay it can't be any worse than some of the yarns i've used in the past okay and i guarantee you this might be a good yarn anyway don't quote me on it we're going to try it out and see how we go you will need two know your washing instructions you will need your hook size wow this one calls for an eight millimeter hook which yours truly <laughs> had to go out and buy because i don't stock an eight millimeter hook um, because i never make larger products or anything larger than a 12 ply uh, sometimes 14 ply but not usually okay so i had to go out and buy this hook specific and i also had to go out and buy that needle specific so thank you to my um <laughs> my subscriber who couldn't get it right <laughs> okay she just added to my stash um that's that now you will need your different colors of course which you will need your golden color or yellow whichever you want to call it you will also need your scissors and of course that needle that i just showed you darning weaving needle to weaving your ends if you're going to do this square if you want to do the join as you go just click directly to the very next um, tutorial and that will be the join as you go but in the meantime we're just going to quickly do this gorgeous granny, granny square and i'm not going to talk anymore let's just do how's that all right for this square you will need to know how to do a magic ring circle loop whatever you want to call it you will need to know chain stitches and you will need to know double crochets and that's pretty much how all you need you will need to know how to weave in ends so I can show you how to do one and then the rest I'll let you do yourself okay so let's start with our magic ring or magic loop cross over your finger like that so form a little cross pop your hook oh I forgot to mention that bamboo this hook is a bamboo hook and sometimes it can be extra sticky and uncomfortable okay so Let's try that again because I'm too busy talking and I forgot to tell you what to do. All right. Whoops. There we go. So you roll that over there and you've formed your cross, right? Let's get a nice little close up for you so you can see. Okay. You pop your hook under your cross, pull that loop up, hold it there. Now you need to hold everything, otherwise, it's all going to come undone. Okay. Now chain one, yarn over hook, pull through the loop. Chain two chain three okay look at the size of those stitches <laughs> okay I'm just going to give this loop a gentle tug you don't need to it's just that I made that a little bit too big 
Now don't let go still until you do a couple of stitches. We're going to do, whoops, I forgot to tell you what we're going to do. We're going to do a double crochet, which is yarn over hook, pop it in the ring, yarn over hook, pull up a loop, yarn over hook, pull through two, yarn over hook, pull through the last two. And yours truly has got the yarn stuck over here. <laughs> Sorry about that. So this is where we are at, our very first stitch. Um, if you want to let go, you can. It's easier to hold it anyway. We're going to do another one. Yarn over hook, hook sorry. Pop it in the loop. Yarn over hook, pull through two. Yarn over hook, pull through the last two. That's better than before. <laughs> Give your yarn a bit of a tug. Not too much. You have to fit three more sets of these three in there. So you've got three double crochets. Now you need two chains. One and two. And now you're going to put three double crochets in that centre again. Now they're called cluster sets if you're newcomers. <clears throat> if you are a regular, you know how to do the cluster sets, go ahead and do your three. That's two and that's three. All right. Now we do chain two again, one and two. Now if I'm going too fast for me, for you newcomers, just leave a comment in the section down below and the next tutorial I'll go a little bit slower. Okay. All right. So another double crochet or another cluster set, I should say. They're called cluster sets when we're working in the same kind of stitch all the way through your tutorials. So we're working in um, three double crochets all the way through this tutorial. So you'll hear me say put a cluster set here and you'll know to do three double crochets. Okay. Now chain two, one and two. <coughs> Excuse me today, I've got a bit of a humbug. Now we've got one set, two sets, three sets. We need one more set. We're still crocheting over that thread there because that's the thread we're going to use to pull later that's why they call it magic when really it's not it's just math <laughs> okay and science and we're going to put three double crochets in that last I'm going to hold on to that thread now because it's too close to the corner there two and three all right and then you chain one and two <clears throat> when you're in the corners you're always chaining two in the corners now these are corners at the moment because we haven't made our square yet <clears throat> we're just about to close up our square and turn it into a square now if you are new to crochet finding that third stitch to slip stitch two will be quite difficult so there's your one two and three right there they look like v's so what you're going to do no yarn over hook just pop your hook in between there and you must pick up two threads one underneath and two on top you're actually picking up the v it's forming a v each one of your stitches form a v see that v and you're picking up that v so you're pulling a loop through that v and through the stitch on your hook and that's how you close up your square now that doesn't look like a square because there's a massive hole in there and it looks yucky right so this is where you you can pull up your loop if you like and do this part you grab your little thread at the back you just give it a tug and it closes up your square that's why they call it a magic loop because it looks like magic when really it's not <laughs> all right we know better actually i just realized pull your loop up we are going to cut this thread because we are changing colors Oh, if you, if you want to use the same colour, go right ahead. Don't cut if you have already. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, but we are changing our colours because we are going to use, whoopsie daisy, we're going to use these colours here. Now we're into the dark pink now. Kind of looks purple. It almost does look purple. And I started using this and so I had a thread somewhere. Don't worry. We'll just pull from here. There we go. <clears throat> All right. Now, let's blow that up a little bit more. Okay, now, for those of you who know me will know I don't like to start on an area where there's a, a thread already, but you can start there if you like. doesn't matter where you want to start. I usually start from the opposite direction just for fun. Okay, no reason. Um, I think it kind of evens everything out later when you're weaving in those ends. I'm sorry, I'm not even doing the right thing and telling you what to do. Pop your hook in a corner, grab your thread, pull it through, pop your loose thread over the front and what you're doing is just give it a bit of a tug 
you're going to be locking that thread into place so you can crochet over that thread as well so you chain one and two and three now at the beginning of every row we are going to be chaining three <clears throat> excuse me now we're going to do a double crochet and we're going to crochet over that thread and it's what it's doing it's locking it into place there's your first double crochet and second okay now we only need to do two here because the chains will will classify as one double crochet in the corner only so you've got one two and three even though we only counted two okay i know the math sounds weird but it's true keep crocheting over that thread so now we're going to chain two to form the corner <clears throat> and now we're going to put double crochets in there our cluster set in the same corner so put your cluster set next to the first cluster set <clears throat> okay it's huge i can't even fit the square into the um <laughs> camera lens let's bring it out a bit oh, sorry let's bring it out a bit oh that's going in that's going out there all right maybe we'll get a little closer later okay so now you've got your cluster set one two chains cluster set two two cluster sets in every corner the reason i say that is because the next row you're going to be putting a cluster set of one in the middle and i'll explain that to you later so let's hop into that corner and do your three two three three double crochets chain two and three double crochets okay this is the basic part of doing the granny square the first two rows it's very basic later it gets a bit it doesn't get difficult you just have to remember that there's those extra spaces that you need to put in a cluster set okay so what i'll get you to do oh we'll do it together it's only a short row we might as well just do it all together two double crochets three all together so you've got your three two chains three now when you jump into this corner this is an interesting one see how you've got your loose thread <clears throat> I like to bring that thread over with that finger at the back and hold it a bit tight and I like to crochet over it like that now that's not the end of that thread you just crochet over one and then you can drop it and it, it just sits at the back that's not the end of that thread yours truly is a stickler with threads i will crochet over them and then i will also weave in as well and that gives it extra security it will never come undone that way so a lot of people say oh i've put my blanket in the wash and it's come undone well firstly i don't wash my blankets in washing machines so that's a bit of fact about me um i wash them by hand always and they've never come undone for starters and secondly um it is more secure the people think you don't need to sew it in when they've crocheted over it wrong it will come undone eventually okay three two three unless you're really good at crocheting over it like really tight we're going to put another three two three in the last corner and then we're going to show you how to join so this part of the granny square basic 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 if i'm going too fast for you just pause the um video i'm just rushing the video so that i can get right into that third row for you because that's the row that you need to remember when doing granny squares again it's not difficult it's just that extra set of clusters okay and three all right so we have done so far your four corners now again it's not closed up so it doesn't really look like a proper corner it's sort of all out of shape and weird so we are going to remember what we did before you don't need to chain anything because you're in the middle you just need to chain one two three you need to slip stitch at the top of that third one right there make sure you've got your two threads and one underneath which you have pull your loop through now pull your loop through there mine's a little bit sticky firstly and then do up a loop pull up a loop because i am uh, using a <clears throat> a bamboo hook excuse me and also because I'm really tired of crocheting okay so there you go that's that's your gorgeous square so far our next color will be the light gray or a ghost color I love this color it is gorgeous <clears throat> and it actually allows the rest of your colors to pop which is really really good and I've made a mess of my ghost color have a look at this we like to call this in the crochet world and knitting world yarn vomit ruled it out from the middle and a whole lot of 
yarn came out and I'm not happy <laughs> as you do okay and I don't want you to see me undo this thing I would might just oh, I was gonna say do it off air but now it's looking all right no nope, give me one second I'll do it off air just a moment okay sorry about that guys I just had to get rid of my yarn vomit I know a lot of people sitting there the newbies are thinking yarn vomit what is that <laughs> no it is it's what we call it when we pull the yarn out from the center of your yarn we pull it out from the center there are reasons why we pull it out from the center but we pull it out from the center and a whole lot of middle bit comes out as well which shouldn't happen <laughs> now again i'll explain the center pull later by the way um find a spot where you want to pop your um thread in i'm going to pop it in i'll pop it in there right there okay so again we are going to chain up three this part you know so it's a bit of a bonus bring your thread over always bring your thread over so you can crochet over it if you don't want to do that you don't have to it's what i do to lock it in place so we chain one two and three and then we do two double crochets because remember those chains are classified as one double crochet okay now the reason we do um center pull before we do we'll just chain two here one and two and do another cluster set in your center which will be three double crochets Yes, the reason we do center pull is because um, it is supposed to be easier to glide um, instead of having your ball bounce around. Usually I wind up my yarn. I'm kind of in a hurry to get this tutorial done for this particular lady who has requested um, that she wasn't really um, getting the stitch. She found it a bit difficult. So I decided to do this tutorial as fast as I can and I didn't want to muck around with winding which was a big mistake because sometimes you can muck around with that yarn vomit. All right, so that's what we've done. You can pop your little thread at the back now. Always pop it at the back because you're going to weave it in through the back later. Now, there's that space I told you about before the corner. You need to put a cluster set in that space, just one. Okay, so there's one, two, and three. If you don't do that, you're your, your uh, square will be out of shape it'll pull and it won't look right okay it's all the math happening here now <laughs> now in here you're going to put your two your three two three sorry three double crochets chain two three double crochets so this corner you should be an expert at it now <laughs> or each corners I should say all the corners you should be an expert at it okay three two and three again if I'm going too fast you can pause the video okay <clears throat> sometimes I slow down and then I realize <laughs> that I'm too fast for you and then sometimes I forget and I just keep going <laughs> now again when we're putting um, a cluster set in our middle bit you can hold that thread at the back if you've come to your thread if you haven't doesn't matter Hold the thread at the back. If you haven't done it, you don't have to do this. This is just a little tip that I um, have worked out for myself. And you do your double crochet around that space. One, two, and three. So this, I'll show you what you're doing so you can get it. You're doing two, three, two in the corner, one in the center. Two, three, two in your corner, one in the center, and so on. Until you get to, well, here, and then you slip stitch to join. So the basic granny squares is why they call this the basic granny square is because it is basic. It's um, the first thing I learnt um, when I started to crochet. When I learnt the double crochet, this was the first item I learnt to make. And it is, when I speak to, um, when I teach off air, it is the first thing I like to teach as well. So if you want um, those private lessons, you can give me a chat on the community little community chat down below there and we'll work something out so one and two and a set of three as well so what I'm going to do I might let you continue that you pause the, the video and when you get to this middle section meet me up and we'll finish off alrighty so we are here at the end of this row now all we need to do is what we did before. If you haven't done those three double crochets in that center space, do that now. Okay, and while I bring this lens up a little bit so you can see. Okay. All right. 
there's chain one, two, and three. And now we are pooping, pooping. <laughs> That's funny. We are pooping. <laughs> we are popping. We're not pooping. We're popping <laughs> our thread, our hook into the chain space. You have the one stitch underneath and the two threads on top, the one underneath, two on top. Pull your loop through and pull it through there. For those of you who know me will know that every time I slip up with my words, I do a bloopers video. <laughs> so that's coming up very shortly. I've done a lot of bloopers in the past few weeks and it's so funny. So that's going to come up soon, probably another couple of weeks, but it's coming because I do mess up sometimes and um, occasionally I lose something and it's you know, stuck in my hair or something. I do some weird stuff. So the bloopers is coming. <laughs> All right. So we have slip stitched in there. We're going to pull the loop through and up and give it a cut because we are changing colors and I love this part because it's the last color of this square which means that will be the end of part one. Oh, oh sorry about that that'll be in the part one so find a place where there are no threads I found one right there pop your hook in and now this row will be a lot quicker and it's only because um, we have already done what we need to do and I'm going to show you the first bit and you can go away and do it and then we'll meet up at the end and then we'll talk about what we're going to do next all right so once again I made a bit of yarn vomit <laughs> as you can see in the corner eh? Shh, don't tell anyone <laughs> all right so we are going to pull our loop through into our corner like we've been doing over the past few rows pop your thread over you're experienced at it now aren't you <laughs> so we're going to chain one two and three look I'm making this up as I go along oh you're experienced now <laughs> all right so we are going to put two double crochets in the corner like so one and two we are going to chain two one and two like we've been doing so we've got your three your chains and then your two that's three and put our next three or our next cluster set in there. Now I'm doing this a little bit looser at the moment. Looser? Can I use that word? Um, I'm doing that a little bit loose so that you can actually see and it, the hook can glide. I'm, I'm struggling because I'm such a tight crocheter that I'm struggling. Okay. All right. So you've got your three, two, three there. Now, remember that space that we had to put a cluster set in there? You actually have two spaces now so you've got to put one cluster set there one cluster set there and then do your corner and then you've got to put a cluster set there a cluster set there and then do your corner wherever you see a space all the spaces need to be filled up you can pop that thread at the back now okay we are going to do one cluster set in that first we'll get to the end of this row this not the row just the side and then you can go off and finish it and then we'll come back and have a chat with what we're going to do next okay so there's that and then there is ah oh, I forgot to tell you, you can hold your thread if you want you don't have to it only helps me um, to weave in that end later so I, I know that I've already woven it woven over it once if, you, if that makes any sense so all I have to do is sew it up twice I know I do it three times. I'm a little bit of a stickler with threads as much as I despise doing them. <laughs> I am a stickler with them. Okay. So you've got your corner stitches you've done. You've done one cluster set in that space, one in the next space, and now you're going to put your two, three, two in the corner. I'm sorry. Three, two, three in the corner. Hello, Mary. <laughs> I'm rushing it because I want to get you guys onto that very next tutorial because that's the join as you go and that's the one you want to do. Well, this particular lady wants to do so chain two whoops whoops and three double crochets or cluster set two and three okay Let's pop it up I'm gonna have a look what you're doing all right so what you've done three one one three I mean three two three one one three two three so that's what you need to do to get all the way around to there and then I will meet you up and we'll decide what we're going to do next. All right, where we should be at at the moment now, I've cut my thread because I made a bit of a boo-boo before so we're just going to have to work <laughs> a little bit tight to get that thread in. So we should be at this section here. All right, what you've done is you've done 
your double set, your single, your single, your double set, single, single, double set, and so on. And now we are on that single space just before the corner. And I'm just going to bring this up a little bit so you can see. Okay, and there you go. That's your first double. You probably don't need to see this part because you've done it all before. Two and three. So all we need to do now is what we've been doing all along is slip stitch right into that third stitch. Hopefully yours isn't as tight as mine, which I think I've just almost slipped that yarn. There you go. All right, so we're going to slip stitch in there like so. Do yourself a favour, guys. <laughs> Don't crochet so tightly like me. <laughs> All right, so pull that loop through there and pull a loop through and cut your thread. All right. All right, there you go. Now, oh, that's no good. Bring that out a bit. Now, you are going to, we are going to weave in that middle thread right here, that very first thread we worked with. Now, this is where I had trouble before I came onto the, back to the screen. I kept splitting this thread when I tried to thread the hook, uh, thread the hook, thread the needle. But I got it this time, which is an absolute bonus. <laughs> I did it about five times. I had to keep deleting that tutorial. <laughs> so here we go. You, you've already tugged your center pull, all right? So you've already done that. But most people think, oh, it's done. I'll just cut it here. No, don't. Go and weave in and out at the back. Whoops. At the back of your square, making sure not to see the, the needle. If you can see the needle in here, take it undone because it's going to pull on your threads. But you can't, so I'll just pull it through. And of course, it's knotted. There it goes. All right, so weave in and out. Don't let anybody tell you that's not going to come undone. You really need to get in there and weave. I know that's not going through, but if you want to keep turning and checking, then you're welcome to do that too. This is probably not the right needle for it. It's not pointy enough. So what I'm going to do, and all that looked like it might have gone through, no good. What I'm going to do is stop weaving there. Let me get that thread out of the way. It's just confusing everything. Now, we've gone one way around. Now what we're going to do is jump into the stitch, not the same stitch that you've come through, jump into the stitch afterwards and weave in and out the other way. And that is how you stop your yarns or your threads from coming out. Except I've lost my, my thread, haven't I? So I'm going to put it in anyway. And then re-thread the needle. It's a little bit unconventional, but it works. So I have to re-thread the needle. Now, if you want, you can go ahead and weave in this end without watching me mess up the thread because it's not very good thread, come to think of it. I'm not happy with it splitting so much. Not really. Anyway, you've gone one way and you're going back the other. Oh, that's good. That's gone through. Look how it split that yarn. That's terrible, isn't it? Okay, so you've gone back one way. You've gone in the other. Pull the thread through. Oh. Struggling with this thread, dear me. Okay, and if you want, you can stop there. I still like to go through again. And then when I'm done, which is good because I've just cut that thread so many times, it's gone too small. I give it a bit of a snip and then you just stretch your item out a bit. That will not come undone ever. If I give it a bit of a pull now, it's still not going to come undone. Okay, All right, that's one. The other one that a lot of people find tricky is that very last thread, okay? Now, with these ones here, I'll we'll just do one real quickly so I can show you. With these corner ones, you can just weave in and out the back, always the back of your work, all right? Always not on the front with it. And the way you can tell the front, I've done this before in tutorials, when it's looking at you and if your little Vs here are facing you, that's the front. And if you're looking at it and your Vs are facing the back, that's the back. Plus the back is sort of wobbly and bumpy, whereas the front looks very flat. Okay. All right. Now, just quickly weave this back one. Now, you've already crocheted over it once, remember? So now, if you've done it my way, you have. Oh, 
there we go so now you're just going to find a little end split it and then weave in and out at the back but turn it over and make sure you can't see the, the needle and you can't pull it through once then you're going to pull it through another time go through the back and I tell you this needle is not good anyway there you go and you've done it the three times you crocheted over it once sewn through twice that's your three times all right so we are going to thread this very very top one this is the one a lot of people have problems with we are going to pull our thread through oh good it didn't split I still split the yarn have a look at the yarn or split okay so I'm not happy with the yarn <laughs> but don't tell anyone all right so we are going to this particular end is the one that everybody stresses over now I get it I used to stress over it a lot too because it's the one where we slip stitch so it's quite visible but in our case it doesn't matter because we are going to be doing our crochet along so when you're crocheting it together you're going to be crocheting over that spot so it doesn't really matter so ordinarily I would weave that thread into this stitch and go right down there and then weave it through the back but because um, we are going to crochet over this section this is what I'm going to do all right now turn it around face it to you if it helps if you you know what it helps me to do it this way the, the front okay so I'm going to go through that back stitch and what I do is I split the yarn now the problem with splitting yarn is that you can't fix this later so if there's anything wrong here fix it now if you've got two here instead of three and you want to take it undone do it now once you start splitting that yarn you find a mistake that's going to have to be cut because you won't be able to get this out all right unless you sit there with a very fine pin and you unpick very very slowly so there's your thread pulled at the back that's a little bit noticeable from far away let me show you from far away you can't tell all right and that's going to be crocheted over anyway so it doesn't matter but we're not finished just because you put it through a few stitches doesn't mean you're finished no no you're going to go back the other way and split it in a different area now again this needle is not that crash hot you know why because it's too blunt i should have used the pointier one lesson learnt now we live and learn all the time all right there you go so you're going back the other way because you are going to crochet over that it's thick but when you crochet over that you won't see it okay uh, if it helps you to split another section just don't pull too tight if you pull that too tight that's going to be noticeable okay we're going to go back the other way again again it might be a little bit thick but just this one section okay there now if you weren't going to put any more uh, rounds on you would have been better off doing what I usually do where I split the yarn this way at the back all the way down to the back of that and then I go in and out of that twice that's only if you were ending there and you weren't going to put anything on but we are going to put a border so that's been sewn in a couple of times it's going to be crocheted over as well that won't come undone so your next tutorial will be this okay your very very next tutorial will be crocheting all four of these together and I don't know how I'm going to fit them all into the screen <laughs> when we do it but that will be your very next tutorial so um I hope you like this tutorial don't forget to give it a thumbs up don't forget if you want to continue to see more tutorials from wow crochet you need to subscribe and you also need to hit the little bell button so those tutorials can be sent to your inbox now your very next tutorial will be crocheting all four pieces together now that tutorial I've already done so both of these tutorials will probably be going up at pretty much the same time so um, good luck with yours and don't forget to stick with us for the join together and ciao for now <laughs> see ya